Welcome to my presentation on the Swiss procurement system, where I will focus mainly on the concept of value of money, but also competition and innovation. Before we deep dive into the topics, well, maybe you ask yourself, why am I talking to you? What can I tell you? So just a quick presentation on what, what we are doing in the country as Swiss State Secretariat of Economic Affairs. So we support countries all over the world in economic topics like infrastructure management, public sector development, sustainable trade, but also public financial management. And there we also have projects in public procurement. For instance, we have the PINK project that we support here in South Africa. We work closely together with National Treasury to help to develop guidelines, tools, etc., to make public procurement easier for the provinces and the municipalities. We also try to improve and help better knowledge management. So if you want to talk about that with me, we can have another chat. But now going to the Swiss system. So I just want you to pause one moment. And if you hear Switzerland, what do you think? What comes first to your mind? Is it public procurement? Probably not. Is it maybe cheese? I got you right. Or maybe you first thought chocolate? Very probable. For others who like shows and stories, maybe you also remember Heidi, the happy Heidi from the mountains, right? Or especially important also globally we are quite well known sometimes in positive sense sometimes not so our banking system which of course is very important but do i want you to think of these things after our session no there are three other elements i want you to remember after my presentation it's competition switzerland and the swiss companies have to be highly competitive and this is linked to the second point, the global economy. Switzerland is very globalized. We have connections all over the world. Our companies must compete globally. And the last point might be the most surprising one for you. It is SMEs. SMEs are the backbone of our economy. So before I tell you a bit more about uh, why that is and what does it mean for a public procurement let's have a look at switzerland on a from a overall view so switzerland is in the center of europe and yeah i admit swiss politicians and also we privately sometimes think we are the core of europe on a geographical map this is true i guess but politically not so. But now also to give you a flavor, if you compare Switzerland to South Africa, you will see it's not really comparable. But um, for, for instance, just looking at the size, we have only about 41,000 square kilometers. And you here in South Africa have a million 200,000 square kilometers. That's impressive. Then if we compare the population size, you have Switzerland on one hand with 8 million and the South African with 55. But so now what is surprising is comparing how our government, our country is structured. So we have 26 cantons. Imagine. And even more surprisingly, the amount of municipalities we have. 2,222 municipalities. Unbelievable, isn't it? But well, this number is um, dropping continuously as more and more municipalities are merging. The mergers need to happen because a lot of municipalities don't have enough stuff. They don't have enough specialized stuff to deliver the services that the citizens need, especially in the more remote areas in the mountains. 
This is happening because the younger people move to the cities, a phenomenon that you also know here in South Africa. Now, looking at the construction or, or the, how the, the economy look like, you see how dependent we are on other countries. So, for instance, the EU, our big brother, if you may say so, um, we import more than 70% from the European Union. And we export more than 50% to the European Union. That's quite a number. But now I want to look you at this number of 99. 99% of our companies are SMEs. Well, you might say now, but uh, the statistic is one to 250 employees is an SME. I mean, 250, that's not really an SME anymore. You, you are right, but then we can look at the other definition that says SMEs one to nine employees. And if you look at that, it's still 90% of our companies are SMEs. So 90% of our companies have less than 10 employees. So what would you expect? that we have, for instance, special treatment for these SMEs because we need to protect them, right? So that they can compete, that they can get government tenders, isn't it? Well, I come back to that in an instant. First, I want to just give you a flavor on the legal framework in which the whole public procurement takes place. So the key reference point here is the WTO Agreement on Government Procurement. Switzerland has to comply with that. We are a member of it. Maybe just to highlight what is so important when you look at the WTO Agreement. Well, the rules are there to make the government to act as a private actor. So to be more competitive, to be more transparent, right? Besides that global agreement, we also have, of course, agreements with the European Union. It's very important to have access there. Then we also have agreements between the cantons and between the national level and the cantons, as well as with the municipalities. It's quite a complex framework. And at the moment, we are also trying to simplify that and harmonize. Just looking more in detail into the legal framework, we have basically two pillars of it. So one is there to ensure market access. So market access for the Swiss companies to the big economy, to the big world, to the European Union. And for that, we have these different agreements. On the other hand, it's important to ensure competitiveness of our sector. So here we call it the renewal of Swiss market economy. So to forbid cartels, um, to have a Swiss Single Market Act and Public Procurement Act. This is very important, this aspect of ensuring that the companies are competitive. Now, the principles and procedures are very similar to yours. I think there is no big surprise. You have, of course, transparency, which is key as a procurement principle. You have the competition among tenders, of course, also very important than the equal treatment, of course. And the last point is the one I want to highlight, is the rational use of public funds. So here, just read that line. Not the cheapest, but the economically most advantage offer. Okay, you can also rephrase it and say, um, we want to have a good price performance ratio. If you translate value for money um, into German, then the word by word translation will be price performance ratio. And with that along, another important principle is fit the purpose, right? So the goods or the services you buy as a government need to fit the purpose. So sometimes an item must be more expensive, must have a higher quality, um, to fit the purpose, and it's not the cheapest. So under that, you ask yourself what I mentioned before. 
is there special treatment for the SMEs? Because how can it be if you have open boundaries, if everybody else, if the Germans can come to Switzerland and compete for our public tenders, we must protect these SMEs, right? No, no. They're, for small and medium enterprises, they are not protected or preferred by the Swiss public procurement law. There is no preferential system for our SMMEs. But, and these are the key points, we have harmonization or we try to improve that through all levels of public administration and legal, of the legal framework. This is important because it simplifies. And this goes together with the second point, the easy and quick access to procurement information and opportunities. Because the easier, the quicker, then it also burdens the small companies less. You don't need a procurement specialist within your company to compete, for instance. But then, of course, the contracting authorities may take care of the interests of SMEs through different features of the procurement process. So, for instance, <laughs> there we come back to the high weight for quality. Hmm? Then the project structure. So we can define the tenders as specialized and focused tenders. The contract size. So if you have different elements within a big tender, you could define that a specific topic is one lot. So a company could just tender for that specific plot and not for the whole package you put out. Then, of course, allowing for bidding consortium and subcontracting. This is what you know as well. And again, what I said before, keep the bureaucracy as low as possible. Get rid of your red tape. This is the most important thing, especially at the municipal level. If these guys need to, to be able to manage the procurement system on their side, but also for the SME side. Now, the key aspect, again, what I said now a couple of times in our system is the quality. So how do you make sure that quality gets enough weight in a procurement system? Well, you can reflect that in our two-stage evaluation process. So at the first stage, we look at the general requirements, of course, and the suitability eligibility criteria. Then at the second stage, it is probably that's exactly where, where the key element is. So you look at price and quality at the same time. So you don't have separate um, processes for that. And why is this so important? So we said key for value for money is to fit the purpose, right? So if a company, for example, has excellent services they provide you, they offer, they will be more expensive. And maybe it's exactly that offer you want. But if you then only look at the price, or if at, in an end round, it's only the price criteria that counts, that company will not win the tender. So looking at this in a bit more detail, so this evaluation in the regular case, as I said, we want the best value for money, right? And here we say we have both the price and the quality criteria together make up the 100% at the second stage. And how you weight every criterion will depend um, and will define, of course, then the individual score of a tender. So what is important, of course, is also to look at what kind of item or service you buy as a government. If it's more standardized, then quality is not that important. Then it's the price. So in our system, up to 80% can be the price weight of a tender evaluation. If we have more specialized um, items or services we want to purchase, then the quality criteria can be up to 80%. Just, just think about it, up to 80%, the price is only 20. What I want to say here is the whole quality discussion is so important because 
focus what, what you can see if you look how companies work and I mean also for the government if you focus first on quality you increase your productivity because you are more efficient more effective things only need to be done once they don't need to be redone refixed right and also when you look at quality aspects as um, life cycle costs maintenance costs will be included so in the medium run it will cost you less even though at the beginning you might pay more so looking at these um, quality criteria of course what is key it must be linked to the good to the work or services you buy so it can't be just a funky kind of definition so for instance, uh, key criteria are technical handling and service quality criteria. Or what I mentioned before, the maintenance or lifetime cost that needs to be reflected in a tender. Environmental quality, of course. Then also overall the quality of the tender. So there are more possibilities and we can have a chat about that, but it's key to, to look at those. So what else do we do? So as I mentioned, we have often specialized tenders or also lots. If we take an uh, engineering tender as an example, we often have phased tender processes. So we have a first phase that is a preliminary study, often a small kind of contract. Then in a second phase, we have pre-project, building project, authorization project, and then the big one comes in the third phase. It's the builder tender, the construction project, the construction management, commissioning, etc. So if you split that in different phases, the whole contract gets smaller and allows also for smaller companies to compete because they are specialized and they also have the capacity to deliver for a smaller contract. Whereas the big building contracts will probably always be won by one of the big companies. And there is also price is often, as it's maybe more standardized, is more relevant. So you see advantages, as I said before, you have various contracts um, that are based on the capacity and the strength of the engineering offers. You have diversity in tenders and you can award different engineering offices. Because if you have smaller tenders, you can even give them directly to a company. And there you have a set maybe of service providers with a framework contract. So just quickly more in, in detail. If you look at stage one of such an engineering tender, we have organizational structure, suitability criteria. We have, um, for example, the, the experience we define, right? I think that's quite common. You, of course, also have financial aspects of the company, all these kind of checklists that comes at the first stage, if a company is really capable to do the tender. Then at the second stage, this is what I said before, we look at quality and price at the same time. So looking here, we have, for example, references and quality of experience is one criteria, the capacity and apprentices, so I, I like that aspect, apprentices. So for example, if you as a little company in Switzerland compete for a tender of, let's say, the city of Zurich, then you get extra points if you have apprentices. I think that could be very interesting in South Africa as well, as with the vocational training um, that the government supports, companies could be rewarded of having young people and train them because they get an advantage when they compete for a public tender. And then we have the price criterion. And you see in this case of an engineering tender, it's often between only 20 to 50% of the overall weight. So with that, I'm already at my takeaway messages. So I think it is important, especially when you see how, how can it work in Switzerland? On one hand, you have this massively global economy 
you have these competitive public tenders where not only Swiss companies compete, but also the Germans just across the border, the French across the border, the Italians across the border. So it's a lot of competition. What is key is that the public procurement system aligns or is aligned to the market structure of the Swiss economy. It focuses on assuring that the SMEs are competitive on one hand, but on the other hand, that the system allows also these SMEs to compete with all these features we, we um, discussed before, with specialized standards, with lots, etc. So we have instruments to allow the SMEs to compete. But I think I want to close my presentation with this focus on value for money, the quality criteria. Please think about that when you do and prepare your next tender documents. And I want to end with a quote from William A. Foster, a US Marine. He said, quality is never an accident. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, intelligent direction, and skillful execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. I like that. Keep that in mind. And I think especially in this time during the COVID crisis where our work is so difficult and we have to keep on running, keep on running, right? But while, while you are running, don't forget that we have to focus on quality and that sometimes needs or, or requires from us to sit down to think of what we need in a public tender, what, what is like the, the fit, the purpose of, 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 of an item and service we purchase. So keep on running, but keep also the quality criteria on your mind. So I'm looking forward to the Q&A session after my presentation. Have a lovely day.